assigning unique identification codes. Data are an important part of pyramid model implementation. Using de-identified data ensures data quality, data security and privacy, and enhances data management. Developing a code structure will help data coordinators link all data together in a way that will help organize these data to efficiently create meaningful data summaries. The guidance for assigning identification codes should be made at the state level if data are being collected as part of a state level effort. The state data coordinator should decide how programs will create unique identification codes and train program data coordinators on how to assign identification codes to staff and children at their program prior to data collection. If data are not being collected as part of a state level initiative, then programs should discuss this task at a program leadership team meeting and decide how unique identification codes will be developed and assigned. This is a list of the do's and don'ts. So when creating a unique ID, it's best to use numbers and or letters so a combination works well, um, except make sure that it isn't a name. Um, use patterns, but be consistent. So again, you can use a combination of letters and numbers, um, as long as it doesn't necessarily spell out a name or anything like that. You want to avoid using initials because many people have the same or similar initials. If you are using a combination of letters, letting people know that that is not, you know, it's, if it happens to be someone's initials or something like that, letting them know that that's not, um, that's not the way the unique IDs are being assigned. You want to create an ID that is easy to remember and that it's as short as you can possibly make it because you want to make sure that there is consistency throughout and that people are using the correct IDs on the different forms so that there isn't confusion about which data is being submitted and for who. Again, you want to um, avoid using initials as uh, an identifier because a lot of people have similar initials. So you want to avoid that. You don't want to use personal information. So as I said before, you can use a pattern of letters and numbers, um, just don't use a name, don't use any social security numbers, any type of personal information. You want to try to stay away from that. So it's really, it can be a tedious process to figure out what, how to create IDs and sometimes can be quite frustrating because at some point you might realize that this the process that you were using to create IDs isn't necessarily working very well, but you know that's why up front you want to think about this and think about the long term. So over time, is you're going is the way you're assigning ID is that going to perform well over time? So across the years, so you want to make sure that you take all of that into consideration as you decide how to create your unique IDs. Here on this slide, what I have is um, the different types of IDs. So unique IDs are used on each pyramid model measure on the paper forms, um, if you're using them and in the Excel workbooks. So when and which IDs are used are dependent on the measure. So for example, the program implementation coach ID is only used on the program implementation coaching log. So that's the only place that uses that specific ID. And the practitioner ID is used in a couple of different places. So if you are part of the, you know, one of the classroom program, then you would use a practitioner coach ID on the teapot. If you're using the custom field in the NCPMI version of the teapot scoring Excel, so there is a custom field where you can use a practitioner coach ID if you're using the tippy toes and on the classroom coaching contact log. 
So those are the places where you would use a practitioner coach ID. For the early intervention programs, you would use the practitioner coach ID on the early intervention as pyramid practices fidelity instruments and on the early intervention practitioner coaching contact log. So those are the two places that you would use the practitioner coach ID. And this applies to the form and also to the Excel spreadsheet, the, the spreadsheet for, the, um, for, for entering your data. As far as the practitioner ID, so in classroom programs, you have um, a teacher ID field for the teapot and the tippy toes. You also have one for the classroom coach, sheen contact log. So you would be entering uh, teacher IDs here and then also in the BIR system. So the behavior incident report system also requires you to have a um, teacher or classroom ID. For early intervention programs, the EI, PPFI, the FD, that one also has a practitioner ID as well as the coaching contact log. And then as far as child IDs, we only use those in classroom program tools and that is used at, with the behavior incident report system. And this is only pyramid model tools. So your program might be collecting other data. Um, and so those data, you know, if, if you've already have an ID system for that, then you could continue that same process here um, as long as it, you know, it works for your program. So as far as creating um, an ID, one of the things that you want to do is have an ID key. So an ID key is a really um, is a is a good way to have a place to save um, all of the IDs in a place that can be found to by the data coordinator and administrator or director that's stored in a secure cloud drive. Um, or a network drive. So if there's something your, your program is using, whether it's a Google Drive, Dropbox, Box, anything like that, or your network, you know, you want to make sure that you keep a key that has all of these IDs. Um, we recommend also a paper copy of the key, putting that in a secure filing cabinet. Um, just because sometimes we know technology doesn't always work. So having a paper version of this key just stored away somewhere, just in case, is also a good idea. Um, what I have here is um, a couple of examples. So this is a state ID key. And what I've done is I've created um, IDs for the program implementation coach. So at the state level, they would have a program implementation coach name, so a table with those names along with an ID. So in this example, I've used the letters PC for program coach and then two digits for each coach. So 010203, if I get a new program implementation coach, I would put in their name and I would their ID would follow with the next uh, two digit number, so PC04. Um, I also like to include notes on my keys, and this is because it's a good way for me to keep track of data. So I wanted, I like, for example, here, um, this coach, coach one, program coach, coaches site 205 and 206. And so this helps me to see when I'm looking at that program implementation coaching log for PC01, that I can see that that data that's being submitted is for sites 205 and 206. So if I get data for PC01 and I don't see any data for 206, site 206, but I do see something for 205, then that would lead me to question this coach and say, oh, has there been any coaching to site 206? Um, so that's why I like, that's one way I like to use the notes column. You can also use this note column if this coach leaves. So say um, coach 03 is no longer uh, part of the initiative, I might put in a note here that this coach is no longer coaching effective this date so that I know when I'm managing my data and organizing it that I won't be receiving any data from this coach past a certain date. So that's something that you might also record in a notes column. The other IDs that the state has are program IDs. So they would type in every name of every program 
that is part of the initiative and then an ID. So here, um, using a three digit number, but the first number is being used as a cohort number. So cohort one, program zero one, cohort one, program zero two, cohort one, program zero three. And so the first number is being used as a cohort number and a two digit number for each separate program. And so then the next year or the next you know cohort, then I would do you know a two, a one, two, oh two, two, oh three. Or I could continue if if you wanted, you could continue down that line and say, well, um, cohort two, we're gonna go on with the digit the two, but we're gonna continue that two digit number. So oh four, two oh four, two oh five, two oh six. That's another way that you can do it. So you see, that's why you need to think about it ahead of time. How are we gonna assign these IDs? Um, and what are we gonna do for future years so that there isn't any type of confusion um, for you or for anyone else who is looking at the data or aggregating the data. For the practitioner coach IDs, the example here is, so I have ABC program, that's this one here, 101, and these are the practitioner coaches for that program for ABC. So their ID, I've used the program ID 101, followed by the letter C to indicate a coach. You'll see that that's different than the PC for program coach. I'm using a C just for practitioner coaches, and then a two digit number, 01, 02, 03, and so on. And any new coach that I have would be, if it's, it would be 101 C, and then 04, that would be, I would continue down the line. I wouldn't reassign IDs. They would always be uh, unique to that individual. And here in the notes, I might put that this practitioner coach, uh, number one, coaches teacher one and teacher three. And so again, this is a way for me to know when I get a coaching log, I'm going to look out for data for teacher one and data for teacher three on that coaching log. And if I'm waiting for teapots, that I might um, email Coach 01 and say, um, I need your teapots for Teacher 1 and Teacher 3, for example. So it's a really nice way to have everything in one place that you can really just kind of go to and get the information that you need. The other data is practitioner IDs, the other IDs. Um, so for classroom-based programs, you have IDs for your teachers. And so in this case, we're still going with ABC program. These are the practitioners. I'm using T for teacher. And then a two digit number, 010203. Their complete ID would be 101T01. And so the, you see there's a practitioner ID and there is a complete ID. So any data that I'm submitting to the state, let's say the TPOS, I would likely use this. 101 T01 for all of my data that I'm submitting to the state because then now the state data coordinator will know that teacher, this is data for teacher one that's part of program 101. And so this is that the ID that I would use for that. And then the notes, maybe they left the program, so you want to add that in. Um, anything like that, you can put that in your notes, anything that's helpful to you in managing your data. And then early interventionists, um, I used EI, so EI 010203, and then the complete ID includes the program ID, and then the EI 010203. So this part is really important, that complete ID, because as a state data coordinator, if you receive a lot of data uh, from different programs, and all that program data is using that TO1, TO2, TO3, then um, it becomes an added effort to then have to add in which program does this teacher belong to. So uh, you wanna make sure that programs are using the complete ID when they're submitting data to, um, to the state or to the program implementation coach. One thing I did wanna point out is that here in the practitioner IDs, um, practitioner coach IDs, there are no names uh, for that state ID key. And that is because 
since data is aggregated uh, for across individuals by unique identifier, um, it's, it's unlikely that you as a state data coordinator will need to identify individuals by name. So as long as you follow the guidance, as long as the programs have followed the guidance on how to assign the ID, then um, the state data coordinator should be able to aggregate that data. And what is really important is that the state data coordinator know what IDs have been assigned at each program so that they know what data they will be receiving. So programs should provide the state data coordinator with a list of the IDs um, with, with no names, just showing these are my practitioner coach IDs, these are my practitioners, so that they know what data to expect. At the program level, your ID key might look a little different. It looks different because as you can see here, there are names. Um, you do wanna have names associated with those IDs because at the program level, then it's easier for you to manage, um, manage your data. So at the program, at the program level, level, you have practitioner coach IDs. So you would put in the practitioner coach name and then their ID. And again, I'm using that same program ID followed by the letter C for the practitioner coach and then a two digit number. Practitioner IDs following that same format, the uh, practitioner's name, their ID, so their complete ID. So that has a program, the letter T and a two digit number, and then any notes. And early intervention is um, same thing, the name, complete ID, and any notes. So there are templates that you can access. Um, there's a Word template and there's an Excel template, and I'll show you those and what they look like. So here is what the state ID could look like in a Word template. So you would have your program implementation coach names, the IDs and notes. Then you would have your programs. So all of your program names, ID and notes. Then you would have, um, I would say a page per program. So you would have a program name here, their program ID, followed by the practitioner coach IDs and then the practitioner IDs. So you would have this kind of um, information for each program. And so in the template, there are two pages for programs, but you can just um, copy this, copy this onto an additional page. In the Excel, if you are an Excel person, you can, I've also created an Excel template. And so this one is the same thing, except it's organized by tabs. So here you have program coach IDs. So you'll have all of the program implementation coaches names, all of the IDs and notes. And then on a separate tab, they have the program IDs so that you have all of your program names and their IDs. And then a tab for each program. So each program tab looks exactly the same. So program name, program ID, and then practitioner coach IDs and practitioner IDs. And then if you want to rename these, you can. So um, you right click on your mouse and you go to rename. And then here you might use a program ID and say, this is program 101. And so then you have all of 101's data here. Um, as a state person, what you can add here is maybe the state data coordinator, the program coordinator's data coordinator's name. So you might have their name and their email here in case you need to email them, you have that information handy. So that is um, the Excel template. And then you can add more of these. So all you have to do is just um, move or copy, and then it'll give you a little box like this. You want to make sure that the book that you have is the one that you're, you're, you have open. So template for state ID key, or if you've called it something else, you want to click on this, move to the end, create a copy and select OK. And now you have a copy of that same um, sheet, that same tab, and then you can rename this to um, whatever uh, name that you want. For the program, there is a word template as well. And so this just looks like page two and three of the state ID key. So it has the program name, program ID, and then practitioner coach name, practitioner name, the IDs and notes, and then you can copy this. And then here you have the child 
name ID and any notes. So this is a, an example of a program ID key in Word. And then in Excel, what you would have is your program name and your ID so that you have that handy. And then your practitioner coach IDs would be on that second tab. The practitioner ID, so all of your practitioner IDs here. And then if you're a classroom program, then you would have your child IDs here, child name, ID, and any notes. Um, and if you don't do any data with um, children, then you can just remove this tab by just um, right clicking and then selecting delete, or you can leave it there. So you have um, this template that you can use as well. So those templates are available for you to download and use. So the process of creating IDs um, can be tedious again, but as long as you um, think, think it through on what is the easiest way to create IDs uh, that will be easy for your programs to also use, that is, um, that, that's the best thing you can do up front. And again, you wanna think about over the years, how that might change. Um, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email me. My name is in front of all of the spreadsheets. So it is vigia at usf.edu. Feel free to email me if you have any questions. Um, and happy data collection.